introduce my boy Smitty right here. Yeah. He's from Atlanta, former Atlanta cop, yeah, motorcycle man. cop. And what's your name, man? I'm sorry. It's Mike. Mike. And Mike, you do what for a living? I'm a curator of events. Okay. Art, poetry, financial and then, literacy. And this is David. Oh, that's what's up. Mike. That's what's up. And you all know David and Chris. That's right. Chris, Chris behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So I had some questions to Smitty about uh, being an Atlanta cop or working for the system. How long ago was this? 2016. 2016. But that wasn't that long ago. No. I thought it was longer. Like, I look old or something? No. But I just thought <laughs> it was something a long time ago. I'm trying to figure out. No, man. 2016. Got so out of there. my question is the people in the court system, like the, um, the judge, the prosecutor, police officers, I feel like it's an evil system. So are these people inherently evil? <laughs> or... Does the system make you callous and then you become evil? I mean, I, I just think it depends on what kind of person you are and where you was born and where you was raised and how you was raised because you could become evil in the system. I mean, that's that's, that's easy, but um, you can also start off evil. And why'd you stop? Why'd you uh, get out of the business? Because it was getting evil. It was getting evil. Yeah. And I felt like, I mean, either I was going to die or I was going to kill somebody for no reason. So I said, um, I got to I got to go. I remember you telling me once that you got tired of writing people tickets because the system would handicap them, then want them to pay all this money for tickets. Yeah. And it was just a revolving door. Then you get on probation. And I have been a victim of this <laughs> my whole <laughs> since the time I turned. I lived in Atlanta. I grew up there. I was in that jail and Memorial Drive for six months. Oh, wow. On the seventh floor. And um, I grew up going through that my whole my whole through my whole twenties, from the time I was eighteen to two thousand nine. Atlanta jail. Uh, I've been in Fulton County Jail, Wright Street. I've been in Wright Street. Been in um, Memorial Drive, that jail. I was in Roswell Jail. I've been in Douglas County Jail. Um, I think I've been in every jail. In, I've A been lot in of addresses in Atlanta. Gwinnett County Jail. Yeah, I've been in all of them, man. Um, for stupid shit, you know, <laughs> driving with no license or expired insurance you know most of your most of your jail was traffic traffic or entering auto i had a lot of entering autos when i was younger too but i had more traffic violations than actual physical crime that's why you got me i'm a former traffic cop (laughs) and you wanted to find out why you went to jail so many times no i knew why i went to jail so many times i was out after dark okay and i was black (laughs) yeah that's all it yeah it's, it's uh it's called dwb yeah. Yep. Driving drive while black. Yeah. Driving when you're black. Yeah. I had a cop uh, pull me over on Memorial Drive once and said, "Your car." I just left the club. He said, "Your car fits the description of a vehicle that was involved in the shooting." I said, uh, "Okay." He said, "Let me see your license." All right. Takes my license, goes back to his car, brings me back my license, says, "All right, you're free to go." I was still sitting there like, "Wait, aren't you gonna look for a gun?" Yeah. Aren't you gonna swap it didn't make my any hands sense. for gunpowder? Yeah, it didn't make any sense. It didn't guess. make any sense. Like, you're not looking for me. I thought you were looking for a shooter. So stuff like that would happen to me all the so time. You, so you knew it wasn't about the car, it was about you personally. Well, I drove a 76 Cadillac too. I knew the car attracted them to me. A 76 Cadillac looked like the car. How many of those they on the 76 Coupe de Ville with 10. Not not a lot of those on the street, so no. your car looks like Yeah. So it was I mean, unique. It looked like a black person's car. And I was a kid, I was 19 years old. Yeah, I can see how that can you know, I I mean I see how the system could damage because I'm, I'm on both sides of the system. You know what I'm saying? I'm a black guy from the projects in New Orleans. And I've been a victim of police my whole life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when I became a cop, my duty was to not be that guy. Yeah. And that's how I have so many friends like you and, you know, all the friends that I know. Yeah. Like God just called just now. You know, it's like, it's, it's not, like I said, the system can corrupt you if you allow the system to corrupt you. But you also can come in there corrupt. Mm-hmm. as a person and I could have easily been corrupt you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. I've, I've been thrown on the ground as a teenager been put in handcuffs for doing nothing I got shot at and they questioned me like I was the shooter you know what I'm saying so I get it you know born black born in the projects in New Orleans and then moving to Atlanta and then it just helped me curate who I wanted to be as a police officer you believe the system is working the way it was designed to work or is it broken I mean everything could have some screws tightened, bro. Like, you know, I mean, everything 
got squeaks. Mm-hmm. So nothing's perfect. So because you said you felt like you uh, were going to end up either getting killed or killing somebody, I'm assuming you didn't have to kill nobody. No, not personally. Oh, good for you. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, I pull my gun a lot of times. Yeah. But like I said, is if if I didn't feel that much danger from the person that I was pulling my gun on, mm-hmm. then I'll just put it away and put my hands up. Yeah. That was just me. And I mean, like, you can still, my name still ring bells in Atlanta, man. You weren't, you wasn't around for Red Dog, right? I was. You was? Yeah. Oh, okay. I wasn't a Red Dog because that wasn't my, that's not my part of the job, yeah. bro. I remember them guys, yeah. though, two skinny dudes to run yeah. you down and some big dudes to flip you over. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't. You got caught. It's, it's, like I said, when you come into the system, and I'm going to call it a system because that's pretty much what it is. Mm-hmm. If you come into the system as a certain kind of person, then you, I love riding motorcycles. Mm-hmm. So I said, when I came in the system, I said, I want to be a motorcycle officer. Mm-hmm. Now I found out what it entails once I became a cop, you know, writing the tickets and all that kind of stuff. But all I thought about was they're going to pay me to do something that I love to do. Like football players, you know, they love to play football. You get paid millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. Everybody that does a sport, they grow up loving sports. I grew up loving riding bicycles and popping wheelies and riding motorcycles. So but besides the obvious, like speeding, what are you looking for? On a motorcycle, you know, as far as trying to write somebody a ticket. Depends on the day. Like you just, so when you get on your bike, <laughs> you start moving around. What, what exactly are you looking for? Did my girl piss me off that morning? Exactly. Okay. I mean, I mean it de- like I said, it depends, bro. That's, yeah. And that's what people don't understand. Like cops are human too. Yeah. So hurt people just like, hurt, hurt people. Just like, just like the, the, the guy in the stock market go to work. And he's, you know, he's mad and he probably makes some bad decisions and bad trades and, you know, spend people money that he, man, I'm just going to buy a million shares. Hopefully it works. Yeah. Cops wake up the same way. You know, my girl made me mad. I couldn't sleep because my kid was crying. You're going to go to work angry, bro. Yeah. So when you run up on somebody, it depends on how that person responds to your anger. You're going to, you're going to react and you're going to lash out. You think it affected your home life? Oh yeah, it did. Yeah, being a police officer. Yeah, yeah. That's why me and my kids' mom not together today. Really? Yeah. I always saw that that police officers had a higher rate of domestic violence. Oh no, I mean, I ain't. Gonna, I, I didn't have that part of the. Yeah. The, but I mean, did you bring your work home and come home pissed off? Or no, 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 no. When I when I was at home, what I was mad about at home was from home. Mm-hmm. It wasn't from the job. Like I, I don't. I don't go to go home because my sergeant pissed me off and get mad at my wife because she ordered me around the house to do something. I mean, that, that's my job. Like, yeah. that's my, you know, change the diaper. Okay, baby, I got it. It's all good. Like, calm down. Yeah. But when it came to, you know, answering 911 call, I was on 911 first. I, I did three years working 911, um, you know, knocking on doors, answering calls, dealing with domestic violence, dealing with, you know, those kind of things. So, I didn't grow up in a household with my parents fighting, but being in the projects, you see it. You know, you see how people interact with each other. So when I did go on a domestic violence call, I looked at it like, especially if it was black, I worked in the black, I worked in Southwest Atlanta, I was in the SWATs. Okay. So I was predominantly in black neighborhoods. Yeah. You know, so I, was in, I, was, I was in black, oh, he good. Yeah. So I was in black neighborhoods, so I knew how to carry myself around black people. Mm-hmm. Now, if they'd have put me in a white neighborhood, I think I probably would react different. Yeah, you know. So I mean, no, I'm not gonna take that home. I don't want that in my house. When I when I take off the uniform, bro, it's I leave all that outside. Did you ever feel some type of way about taking people to jail who weren't a dick? Like, <laughs> like say somebody they just had a warrant out for whatever, and you had to take them in, and they were just like, "What? You know, what am I gonna do?" I'm, you know what I mean? When I first started working. I did stuff like that, mm-hmm. but when I learned the system, I didn't do that. If I pull you over, you got a suspended license. I know you come from work, you're a hardworking man. Why would I want to give you another ticket mm-hmm. to try to force you to be even worse? You know, like your situation. Yeah, I was just going to say, man. I, I, I wouldn't did, have did that. I very rarely ran into that guy who gave a shit <laughs> about, you know, what I had going on. Nah, I've let, I've, I've let more people go. I, I could say, I can honestly say I let more people go for violations than lock them up. Yeah. The only reason, if, if I locked you up, I had to. Yeah. If I come to your car, I'm like, yo, listen. All right, you're looking and you're sweating. 
I mean, talk to me right now. Your driver license messed up. No, 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 it's good, man. It's good. You got any warrants? No, 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 I ain't got no warrants. Child support? No, 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 I'm good. All right. Listen, when I get on this in this thing and this lady start talking to me, it's too late. Yeah. You know, so let me know everything right now and we could work through it. We can get somebody to come get you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't let you drive off because if you hit somebody and you kill them, then it's my, you know, like now I'm looking, I'm, I'm the bad guy. But let's pull your car to the side. Let's call somebody, have them come drive your car away. And then let's find out, because a lot of people don't know. Yeah. A, lot of you, a lot of people don't know that they had a ticket or they didn't pay the ticket. So you write down everything. Hey, man, look, you need to call this state or call this jurisdiction and take care of this outstanding bench warrant. You know? I never thought about it like that. But, you know, there's such an overwhelming fear. <laughs> I used to physically start shaking. Yeah, you get scared. Yeah, so... We can see it. And because I was going to jail so much... <laughs> <laughs> we can see it. Yeah, so... Uh-huh. But it, but I wasn't I didn't I wasn't in the wrong in my car like I didn't have drugs in the car or gun or whatever but I'm sure to that cop why is this guy so scared he must be doing something wrong it's a natural reaction no nah, I wasn't natural <laughs> no it is it's natural because me now as a retired police officer yeah when I get pulled over I'm shaking sometimes when I see them lights that that you yeah. know that that thing that dropped down in you in in your lower yeah, yeah, abdomen yeah, yeah that happened to me too but this grew over time though like it wasn't yeah. like the first time i ever got pulled over ain't you know whatever yeah but after after i started going to jail every time i got pulled over now i'm like you're trained that's called training <laughs> yeah it's, called training. it's like when you throw a ball at a dog yeah and the, and the dog go get the ball and it drop it yeah and it make you come get it the dog is training you you think you're training the dog yeah yeah that's, that's what happened in the police force and let me ask you this um what are some like positive things you saw as a police officer like what are some beautiful stories you know like oh. you know let's let's you know let's change direction here. okay like, let's, yeah, let's, let's not good. let's let's like i got it all you know bro. i i know there's some bad stuff with <laughs> See, police got officers it at all but you know what i'm saying like you know but let, let's not paint you know the, the the bad picture so much no it's not there's no let's bad there's no exactly there's, there's no bad picture of a police officer it's no bad picture of somebody that's putting their life on the line to become someone to protect that that nobody else want to do like you know what i'm saying like nobody wants to be a police officer like yeah not many people really want to be a cop mm-hmm. some people are born into the you know into the job because their parents you know some people are raised in certain kind of environments and like i said it, it becomes because you have to have a certain kind of brain you know you have to have a certain kind of mentality to, to be a police officer and they put you through all kind of training mental physical and you realize that it's something that you want to do. So positive things for me, I mean, kids, bro. I love kids, yeah, I love helping kids. Um, I was officer friendly. You know, I used to pull up my motorcycle, put oh, the I lights got. on. Yeah, I got, pic- <laughs> I got pictures, I'm gonna show y'all. I seen the picture. Show y'all. Yeah, I'm gonna show you. I'm, I'll give them to you, you can yeah. like flash them on the screen or something. <laughs> but yeah, I was like officer friendly, bro. Um, helping people off the highway was a good thing, you know, especially like, I, I actually got cards sent to the, the, the district because I helped this lady change her flat with her two kids in the car mm. so she can get off the highway yeah. you know and they shook my hand and was thankful and you know yeah. so I mean there's a lot of positive to being a cop you know so absolutely that's good that's that's that. That. go for it that's rare I know a lot of times we find that there's a disconnect between the community and the, and the police mm-hmm. right that's very common yep. in this country right and you mentioned about training. So do you think that training and having an awareness through that training can help the police when they're in those communities they're serving? Because what I found from my experience, <laughs> some of the police in my community growing up ne- had no idea of the disparities or the challenges of the people that yeah. they were serving. I'm like, you're serving my community. You don't know shit about my community. Yeah. You know nothing about what the history of this community. You're just here to serve. You get training. But is it the right type of training? Because the, 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 that disconnect with the community, I find is the education. Mm-hmm. You, is that making sense? Yeah, because I get it. Like I said, I was born in the projects, bro. Like I'm my whole life. So you have the training that you were taught growing up. And then you have the training in the police academy. You have the training from people that that taught you, like the, like the guy sitting on the milk crate. Right. That's a different training from the, the, the drill instructor yelling at me you know what i'm saying like you could tell me what to do and how to do it all day but if i'm living that life or if i'm in in that neighborhood 
and I'm seeing this stuff happen and I'm getting to know people and I'm out there doing community policing. Right. It's a difference. But you can learn. They can teach you everything in the world in a police academy. But then once you get out on the street, you're going to have to retrain your mind to understand what these people are going through, what they've been through. Right. I mean, and that's in poor neighborhoods, rich neighborhoods, you know. Right. I've had rich white people come to me, cuss me out because they didn't think I was doing the job right. But I'm like, you don't know my job. But they feel, oh, I pay you enough. You know, I pay your taxes. I'm like, well, you really don't pay my tax. Like, you don't, your taxes don't come in my pocket. Right. So I understand that, that whole training thing with cops, man. You just have to get out there and, and get to know the neighborhood, you know? Like, yeah, I might not know your, I might not know the history of your neighborhood, but if I get out there and I start talking to people and I, you know, holler at the old lady that's 90 years old that been around the neighborhood all her life, then I get to know. Mm -hmm. shouldn't that be like a, a a mandatory thing as part of the training well you right? can't you can't teach me about your neighborhood because i don't know where i'm going like they, they can't have your neighborhood in the training in the police academy like you have to put that cop out there that's what i mean but he, he has, has to, to have... still do it but i'm saying it would in my opinion yeah it's from experience got gotcha. you my my mother had us living in many different places and we had different experiences. They were all the same. Yeah. Um, the last neighborhood we lived in, they had like a community thing where you can meet the neighborhood cop. As a kid? Yeah. Mm. They had that. But I saw both sides. I saw where the cop don't care. <laughs> or it's like they're not really a present. But I also saw where the community don't show up. Yep. You know what I mean? Where there's an event where you you're get to meet. You're expecting something, but authority. you're not giving back. You're not. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. so I don't want to put it all on the authorities because yeah. then that's why I said there's a there's a gap between the communities and the authorities so that's why I feel education is part of that but just from my experience it feels like elaborate on education though that's 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 what so there's, kinda... there's very there's different forms of education yeah. right there you go. everyone doesn't have the same education there it's not all college you you have the street level education right then you have the home education and you have the secular right uh, and just experience in life right so I feel that part of the education should be this is again from my experience is it's not it's not optional for them to get to know, be immersed in their community you should be if you're gonna police these people that way when you do get pulled over maybe your legs aren't shaking yeah. now you're like oh that's John but that's Mike you know him by in, in, in their in understanding okay man I know your, your tag expired you know what you have nothing else on your record come on man you know what just get home you going home right now all right, man, then look, just, just when I see you again, you better fix that. Was I've it? dealt with cops like that. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, this guy let me go. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that comes with the understanding um, of the, the community, which should be built into training. Just like if you go to school, they have certain things you can't avoid. Prerequisites of classes. You got labs. You got this. You can't say, oh, I don't want to do that. Nah, if it's built in. I just feel that that would be nice if that was built in. So that way you're, you're getting the exposure to the community. And then what you do with that determines what kind of cop you are. You know what will be, you, and I feel what you're saying, but you know what will be even better? It's if those people from the community let their kids know that being a cop is not a bad thing. Right. There we go. You know but, what I'm um, saying? But, More uh, people from communities like that that are becoming cops instead of people growing up seeing cops in a bad light and them saying, you know what? I'll never be a police officer. Yeah. But our police officers hated it's not personal. It's almost like, for me, I don't hate cops. You I hate do. the system for victimizing me. No, I don't hate cops. I don't. <laughs> but it's when I have to go to court, and here's some guy up there that's like, all right, you know, he doesn't even look up at me. He's like, you're going to give me $600 for this, 500 for that, 800 for this. All right, next. You know what I mean? I'm like, this guy I fucking hate. Yeah. He didn't even ask me anything about my life. Do I? Can I pay this money? Yeah. I remember going to court and watching them. Yeah. I remember the judge, so this lady was up there, this disabled woman, older white lady, and she was on social security, and he wanted her to pay a ticket. She had a public pretender in there. He gave a breakdown of what all her bills cost from her social security. $40 for, for food, mm -hmm. you know, $80 for her light bill, blah, blah, blah. He broke it all down. She gets like 600 a month. It was something crazy. And he was sitting there like, well, the judge was like, well, does she have a car? Maybe she could sell her car. You know what I mean? Like, he was really trying to get to 
whatever pennies he could squeeze out of this lady this lady could barely walk and i was so disgusted man i almost wanted to throw up because i, I and i was so angry i left her pissed and uh for me i could afford my ticket but this lady here was she had one foot in the grave and this guy was trying to figure out how to squeeze out but you also don't know what she's done in the past either and what her track record was how many times she been in there, you know? Like, but again, he they a probably, lot of variables, bro. There is, but she could have been handicapped. They probably gave her some funky fucking ticket for 50 bucks 50 years ago. Now, <laughs> now they added another 500 on top of that and then it's just you say a you don't hate cops. snowball effect. I don't I don't I don't hate cops, man. I hate the system that's that's preying on it seems like they're preying on the poor. Anytime I go to court, all I see is you know, the faces are just depressing in there. I mean, who, who's going to be happy about going in there? With, um, only ticket you happy about going is you going on a cruise or something. Bro. Like, yeah, but, but you know. <laughs> going to get on a plane and go to Disney or something. You know, like, yeah, but court can be an inconvenience to some and, and life-altering to others. Um, I've gotten tickets. Even, even traffic. I've gotten you know, tickets court. before. Yeah, and, just, you know, fortunately, you're in a position maybe you could pay it, but some people just don't have. $200 don't seem like a lot. But it's when it's between that or your light bill, you know, you develop a visceral hate. For that system which is you know where i've been in my life since i was 18. But okay but what about stop making the same mistakes or stop making the mistakes that you're making to put you in a certain situation I ain't, i'm not saying it's always that case but you have to start thinking about that kind of stuff yeah like the lady i pulled over a lady and she was like well i it, it, it's not my fault my husband was supposed to pay my tag i was like what but that's your husband it's your responsibility too mm -hmm. so i can't i'm not gonna just say oh send oh oh you're right yeah yeah since your husband didn't pay the, the, the registration, mm -hmm. I'm going to let you go. Yeah, I mean, she drove out the house knowing her registration was... Exactly. Was you know, when, when, you, when was your birthday? Oh, my birthday was last week. Okay, when they told you that every year on your birthday, mm -hmm. your registration expires. Mm -hmm. Did you pay attention to when they said that? Yeah. I get that situation, but there's others where it's like, for example, uh, say child support. I've been there. I, I, I was in jail once with a guy that owed 10 grand. And because he owed the 10 grand, they suspended his license. They do. Um, now you can't drive. Now you can't go to work to make the money that work. you need to pay. I, yeah. I've been there. And they sent That's him the a letter. I let go. They sent him a letter in jail. I was sitting right next to him. Hmm. And shit, I was in disbelief for him. They wanted him to come up with all kind of money. I mean. I've pulled people over like that, man. I'm like, you know, if I write this dude a ticket, or if I take him to jail, now he can't go to work. He's trying to go to work to pay his bills. You know, like I said, but I'm a I'm a different type of guy, and I've been yeah. in a situation where I got the letter like, "Oh, you owe your baby mama twenty thousand dollars." I'm like, "What?" Yeah, out the blue, <laughs> we're gonna suspend your license. Yeah. We're gonna ground you on airplanes. You can't. We're gonna take away your your passport. Yeah, I'm like, nah, I'm traveling around the world. You're not about to do none of that. So I went when I went down there, I was the only dude in the child support office, and it was nothing but women with kids. And they looking at me like, what are you doing in here? I'm coming to contest this. Yeah. A lot of women down there trying to look for their baby daddy to find out, you know, like, oh, let me get his, let me find his address, his, you know. So I get it, bro. But you put yourself in that situation. Yeah. yeah. You know, I have to say, so <clears throat> I remember. <laughs> Turn that mic to you, man. Yeah. You know, and, and to that point, you know, that's why I feel education is so important. In different levels um and it starts in the house if you don't have it in the house yeah. it's, you're gonna get it from somewhere yeah right and that that molds your thinking so the, our environment is so important or powerful in molding us yeah and, and if we're not in a, a, a environment that's conducive to our growth in the right way th then it's going to have us succumb to these prejudices or these 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 ideas that things are just black and white when there's there's things yeah. in between yeah you know, and a lot of us didn't grow up with a dad. Did and you have a dad in the house? No. Yeah. What I but what I really want, and I get what you're saying every time you say it, but it 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 gets me when you say education because it's about experience. It's not edu like education is something that you learn from. Well, let me explain that. A then. book or you know that's no, why no. I kept that's why I keep asking I, you about education. Right, so like elaborate on education. That. So here's the thing: think old school, right? <clears throat> old school education was not from a book. You had. The elders in a, in, a, in a tribe or in a town, they Jewish would they would child. they would actually pass on stories from there, from experience. But keeping this in mind, we're talking about youth. If you're in a household or in a family like mine, 
where you don't have the elders giving you that experience that not passing it down mm -hmm. now i need to go outside the house to get that education mm -hmm. now if it's not in the books it's going to be from experience but what if it's not the right type of experience so ideally we we can, we can become victims of our environment mm -hmm. but then we get to an age of what we call i call accountability mm -hmm. you yeah. you mentioned about okay well after a while if you see you're, you're in these environments, these situations, and, and it's causing bad outcomes, what are you doing to get yourself from having those experiences? Yeah. Right? Experience is not going <laughs> to... Experience to that person didn't teach them anything. Mm -hmm. Right? But then maybe they need to be educated in a different way um, from somebody who, who've been through it and that can tell them, hey, this is not the way to go. But not everyone learns that way. Some people... Could, we learn better from those who did everything right. Now, growing up, I didn't like guys like that. I'm like, this guy don't know what hardship is. But in reality, he does. But he's choosing to avoid it. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of experiences, as I grew up, I wanted to learn from. I want to learn from the guy that didn't fuck up like that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't always want to learn from the dude that's messed up. And he's still messing up. And he's going to sit there and teach me. I'm like, I don't want to learn from you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I have, I, have, I have men like that in my family. I didn't really have any good examples of men in my family growing up. My father was not a good example. Yeah, yeah, your mom around? And my mom. Yeah. Mom worked a lot, though. My yeah. parents got divorced. Well, she probably wouldn't listen to your mom. Like, I didn't listen to oh, my no, mom. Oh, no, I didn't. You know I mean? As I got older, I didn't. I listen to my mom. Man. Did you have a dad my growing mom, up? My mom, crazy. Did you grow up with your dad? Yeah, I mean, he was around, but I didn't grow up with him in the house. Yeah, yeah it I makes a difference. In the house either. Yeah. It, but if I had a man directly yeah. in my house to be like, look, man. Yeah. You know. But I think my mom was crazier than my dad, though. <laughs> Well, black mama, bro. Ready? Black black no, no, no. mom. Yeah. yeah like you but, said, but single dad, black mamas yeah, are the worst. That's what I'm saying, they're, they're, they're worse than that, man. Shit. Man, my mom. I was scared of my mama. What? My mom is my mom was my dad what? too. <laughs> my and I look like my father. But you don't take but advice you... from your mom when it comes to manly guy no, stuff. You don't. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that, but you 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 do get a lot of experience on, you know, how to be a man from yeah. your mom well, in certain well, you perspectives. Hope, you hope though. Here's the thing. The problem is, is that I feel like even going back to what you said about cops and experiences, it's all individualized. Right? Yes. But then you also have it where your experience can be the consensus of the area you grew up with. Mm -hmm. And everyone feels that way because of their experiences. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just the fact. I said, yeah. Right. So that's why I'm like, okay, well, how do you bridge those gaps? Right. Because it's not just with people in authority. Right. And, and sometimes it is in the household. It's like, yo, if you don't respect the authority in your household, yeah, what did yeah, you decide yeah. you're going to respect the cops? True. Yeah, but then yeah. it goes back to what you said about men. If you grew up in a household mm -hmm. and you didn't have authority mm -hmm. as a man, mm -hmm. you can be that kid out there just messing up yeah. because no, he, his, the mom ain't challenging him in a way that he feels is a threat. Yeah, like, exactly. On, You're mom. absolutely right. Come on, mom. That's exactly what I was come getting on. at. Yeah, I didn't. Yep. Right? You said it perfect, man. Right. And they deal with a cop like you. They, they should be grateful because you're probably going to deal with them with like, all right, come on, listen. And sometimes you got to do tough love, whether you're a person of authority as a cop, well, there's, there's different levels of authority in the house. Is authority, school. There's authority, there's, yeah. and then there's the actual authorities like what yeah. you were. If they if they're gonna give you tough love, guess what? You need to take that shit. Yeah. Because well, that's also a form of learning. It gives your, you the experience. In your twenties, you ain't think all you see is a threat. I want to do what I want to do. This guy's trying to stop me, so fuck him. You know what I mean? Like you're not. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody not, different though. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't that. I wasn't that guy. No. I wasn't. In your twenties. I wasn't. No. I went to school, I graduated from high school, I went to college, graduated from college, you know, started looking for jobs, went back to college. Good for you, man. Yeah, Shit. I mean, I just, I'm, I, I'm just, I had, I had a brother that did that, though. Oh, well, I've seen my brother, I've seen my brother go to jail. There you go, I never saw it. You know, I've seen oh, the cop. brother I've, that went to jail. I had a brother, oh. yeah, my brother, my, my, old, my brother a year and a half older than me. Mm -hmm. I've seen my brother get put in jail, but I've seen my mom crying, and I'm the one that's, no, mom, you know, yeah. trying to bring my mama back because they taking my brother to jail for nothing. Yeah, you're the good son. Yeah, so I was like, you know what, I can't, I, he gave, he he put enough on my mom that I felt like I had to be right, you know what I'm saying, because mm. my mom waking up, my brother sneaking out the house, we in the same room, he's sneaking out the house, you know, selling drugs and all that kind of stuff, and my mom crying, and she got to a point where my brother was 16, and she said, I'm not doing it no more, kicked him out. I'm surprised you didn't follow in his footsteps being being younger and not looking at him. I had a little sister like, too, though. Oh, uh, okay. So somebody had to hold the house down. Yeah. My stepdad was in the military, he was in the Navy, so he was traveling. So I felt like, you know, I've watched enough TV, black TV shows to understand that if 
the older brother or the father ain't around, it's your job. Like you're the you're the man of the house. Like that that was always my thing. Like it's very mature. Yeah, when you left, yeah. when when somebody leave the house and they're like, all right, you the man of the house now. Yeah. I felt like I had to do that. That's what's up, man. Very <clears throat> mature of you. I'll give you that one. So yeah, man, I went to college. I want I always wanted to see my parents proud, like happy. Yeah. You know, I went I wanted to get my degree. I wanted to get my diploma. I wanted to do positive things and wow. I wanted to be a positive influence for my, you know, younger sister and you know, just make my mom happy, bro. My mom was always sad because you know, going through relationships and all that kind of stuff, moving house to house and you know, no good boyfriends and all that kind of stuff. Like, who wants to see their parents like that? Yeah. Wow. So. It's interesting. Like I said, I was a different breed, bro. When I became a cop, I I, I didn't become a cop to be a bad guy. I thought that I could help mm -hmm. my people. And I did. I could still get on the phone and, yo, when I go to Atlanta, they, oh, Schmidt. I don't have to wait no lines. Yeah. You know? And I'm talking about these are hood dudes. Yeah. VIP section, they like, yo, man, you coming with me? Like, yeah. you in a VIP, people looking at you like, man, who is this dude? I'm a regular, I'm like, I'm a, I'm a regular dude, bro. Like, I, they, they think I'm the football player. And it's a whole nother side to you. Yeah, man. I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't know that about you, man. Yeah, hey, come, come to Atlanta. I told you, you. I told you, if you come to Atlanta with me, bro, you go. Well, no, I never thought he was a, a square dude or nothing Don't like that. I just bro. didn't think. I, I'm talking about your family side. Oh no, yeah, yeah. I never asked you about it, so I, I didn't know oh. what to. I don't know. So I grew up fighting and stuff like that. I mean, I you know, I I did all the get suspended from school and all that kind of stuff, but I never felt like I wanted to disappoint my parent disappoint my parents, bro. Yeah. Never. Good for you, man. They were good. They you know, my dad wasn't he wasn't that good, but he was a good dude. Yeah. And you know, but my mom was always like, you know, me and my mom talk all the time, bro. Yeah. That's never wanted sad. to see her cry. That's what's my up. brother did that enough. Yeah. So living life, man, is good. I I can't complain now, you know. I Got a good job, got a pension. Yeah. You know, beautiful girl. When I grow up, I want to be just like you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That's good. Mm. So, yeah, man, that was the life. Being a cop was definitely fun. Yeah, I saw the, uh, when you were riding the uh, motorcycles that y'all confiscated. Yeah. <laughs> uh, stolen bikes. He was doing wheelies down the street. Hey man. Stolen bikes. I was stolen testing bikes. it out. I was you know liable for that bike. Man. I was I was testing it out. I was making I was making sure it worked. You yeah. know, after he had to ran it in the bushes. Yeah. Yo, it's like Yeah, man, you just gotta like like I said, man, being being a part of the system like that and you just have to find your you know, you find your niche. Some guys they, they wanna bust heads and they wanna kick in doors and yeah. Me, I felt like I wanted to just show people that a black cop from the hood could be a good dude. You know, I ain't, ain't got to be all bad. Yeah, have some empathy. Yeah, yeah. have some fun and, and and enjoy making money, doing making a lot of money too, doing things that you never thought you'd do. So yeah, I wanted to ask you about that too, making money. You ever had somebody try to look, man? Give five hundred dollars. Just let me go on about my <laughs> business. Yeah, you took the money, right? No. Really? No, nah, man. You're a better man than me. I took. <laughs> I knew he was gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, double take and looked at but what? You it's like, not what? mine, bro. Like I, I, you know, I, I tell you right now, this dude black, bro. I don't, black is no black. We still cool, bro. I pulled him over, and it's how cool we are. I pulled him over. I know a dude named Black out of Atlanta. I wonder if it's right. the same dude. Go ahead. I call. I pulled him over. There was a shooting, right? Yeah. Truck. They said the truck coming. Bad dope deal. I already know what it was. Pulled him over. He had ten thousand dollars. In a shoebox, right? Mm -hmm. Call Max's description, like you say. You, okay, cool, cool. Got him back to the precinct, laid all his money out, counted everything, ten thousand dollars. I said, Black, you get a receipt, bro. You can have it. It's just yours. You, you come back, get a receipt. I put it in property. Hold ten thousand. I went to the club that Saturday. Black was in a VIP section. You know what he did? Yo, Smitty. Appreciate you, bro. Good, you made you a solid dude. That's Why it. he ain't off you? Well, hold on. It wasn't you my already, money, bro. You already had him in the jail at that point, though. It wasn't my money. No, he, I let him go. He didn't. He didn't go to jail. He oh, went back he to the precinct because he had the money. Wait, I couldn't hold just on, what? take. I couldn't just take the mo black. Follow me to the precinct. We got to go count this money. Yeah, but why? I don't understand why you took the money to the precinct. Why you ain't just? Because the money smelled like weed. The shooting that just happened, he got bullet holes in the car and all that kind of stuff. I just, I mean, I had to do what I had to do. So he didn't just say, man, here, man, take $1,000, let me go ahead. I don't even want to fucking. I, I probably didn't even hear him if he did say it, but I knew I wasn't going to do it anyway. It uh, wasn't my money, bro. Yeah. No, I get, I didn't, I ain't saying to steal money, but somebody offered you. That's stealing. How? 
What if you I mean? if I offer you a thousand dollars, because I don't feel like going through the it's gratuity. You still it's stealing. You're taking away from the system. Yeah. See. Okay. The system is trying to rob me here. Let me just get to you. <laughs> And move on with my life. Yeah, you can't do that, bro. Right now, I pay to get. I give somebody a thousand dollars right now. I get my name off that bullshit list. Oh, you got a duty. I hear you. <laughs> I find that's the fine line too. You can easily get into corruption from that point, depending on the person. Yeah. Right. I'm not saying everyone's different. Right. Can't get into it. You in it. Right. Yeah. I mean, once once, you once somebody it. gives you some money, it. right? Yeah. You don't know what's gonna. You don't know what the ripple effect that yes, that sir. Thing's gonna have, right? Um, yeah, it's risky. Like, cause for him, what if you took the money, right? And he was involved in, in a shooting that took the life of a kid or a family or whatever. And now they're looking up China loose ends, re- investigating. They're going to find out that they, you're going to be part of that whole situation. Yeah, man. You know, and all you're trying to do is, hey, man, I'm trying to let somebody slide right now. That's it. But you don't know the details. But I get what, he, I get what you're yeah. saying, too. Like, you know, if somebody, we're not talking about murder. Yeah, well, we're that, talking like if yeah. somebody got like a, like you said, a yeah, that was kind of serious. Yeah. All right, so you, my car told man, look, I, all right, I, I'm going between jobs, man. Let me you just let a, you get two hundred dollars right now. Let me go. Yeah. Okay. So you pull a lady over for speed, right? Mm-hmm. She said, "Hey, take my number. Come to my house. You know, we we can work this out." <laughs> how she look? How she look? <laughs> hey, <laughs> look like a twelve. Like she look like a twelve. She oh. say, "Hey, hey, hey, you know." Come on, officer, please. I, I give you all this. She got a skirt on. She just show it. Wait, you, uh, you, were you asking the, the group? You going? You taking a number? You going to let her go with the ticket? While I'm working, no. After work, I'm going to give her a call. <laughs> See, that's the professional answer. That's what I did. Oh, okay. See, <laughs> I, for you. I said, I said, look. Uh, so you did take some corruption. Right? You sitting over here acting like you. Was, no, no, said, no, that was off the clock corruption. I said, listen, you talking you, about? That don't count. I said, listen, if you go to court, and you pay this ticket, then we can go on a date. That's okay. all she wants. She said, okay. yeah. See, that's not, that's okay. not corruption. That's not yeah. corruption. No, that's not. Damn. Okay. Yeah. He's trying, he's trying, he's trying to, same, he's trying, it's the same. He's trying I'm to just, get something to stick, huh? Just, what yeah, I'm, what I'm, I'm trying, trying to, to get something to stick. And I'm trying to show him like <laughs> yeah. how, you know, certain people think and like his thing is money and some people think it's, you know, sex and, and I know where to go with Chris. So that's why I'm trying to get him. <laughs> Try to get him in a hole. But yeah. that's how it happened though, for real. Man, I done pulled over women and they like flashing, like, oh, can can you let me go this time? I'm like, uh, nah, that looked nice, but uh, you got a sign right here. Press all five cops. Yeah. You know? It is what it is. It's the same thing, bro. It's the, your, your principles and your, you know, your upbringing and your values, all, all that all, all that need to come with you when you're on the job, you know, and when you're off the job, you gotta be the same, you gotta be human. Yeah. So me taking money from a guy on a job and me taking money from a guy off the job, I feel like that was the same thing. Same thing. Because you still you you caught it, you caught up. Yeah. Once you take it, it's it. You know you're you're now you're in the twine. Yeah. Is there a lot of guys that do would take the? I don't know. Guys? You never met any? I don't know. I don't know any. You ain't gotta say their name. No, I just I, I'm just <laughs> okay. being I'm being real. Oh, okay. Like I don't I don't know I don't know anybody that I ever knew that was a police officer that ever took money from anybody that like that. Yeah, I wouldn't tell nobody neither. Yeah. Like if I did, you know, I, I'd keep that to myself. Ain't no point in bragging about that at the station. So yeah, I get it. Yeah, I wouldn't, I, nah, man. I ain't never take any, I never took anything from anybody that wasn't mine. Yeah. Because I can go out there and work for it. And people call you up, yo man, what you doing tonight? Nothing, I got a, I got a job, bro. $500, four hours. Yeah. You get them kind of calls. Yeah. So why would you take that from somebody? I can go sit, I can go sit at a bar, and watch women and people come through for five hundred dollars in in uniform. In the yeah. day, and they don't do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. In my hand, five hundred dollars. Thank you. So you, as a cop, bro, you don't have to take anything from anybody, man. They, it, it literally feel like you're stealing sometimes. Plus, you on these, you on these jobs. I ran a, I ran a truck up the street, it's a, a crane. Mm-hmm. Ran a crane down the street, right? It took me like ten minutes. He gave me one hundred and fifty dollars. I felt like I stole that from him. Yeah, because I would have did that for free. Yeah, you, you also got a. If you rented an apartment in Atlanta, you'd get never pay rent. You never paid rent at all. Never. I thought you all just got like a discount on rent. You never. got free fucking rent. Never. Wow. I lived. Is that in, still to this I day? I lived in Buckhead, in Phipps Plaza on a. I think it was like the twelfth or thirteenth floor. Overlooking the pool. Did you sign like a year at least? Or what was the stipulation? Anything. Nothing. They just hi- they hire you. 
Okay. All you gotta do is park my motorcycle outside, outside the gate when people go up, and I had to answer calls. Okay. You know, I had a stabbing one time. The guy and his girl had a domestic. He stabbed her up. You know, I got to go up there and call investigators and have them come out and all that kind of stuff. But you're just there, 24. Like that's that's your, that's your that's your, you that 24 seven. It's your house. Okay. You got to protect it. Mm, okay. So, so most could, cops in Atlanta don't pay rent. So you would. So they'll take calls. Anytime. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to change direction here a little bit, man. So let's, um, I want to like, kind of like give the listeners some like advice, you know, okay. especially like some, some young men. Oh yeah, yeah, some, yeah, yeah. Know, I got a 17 year old. Yeah, there we, I got a 17 year old as well, <laughs> you know, and my son is half black, half white. Yep, yep, there you, you know? go. So, my son um, half Hispanic. These old ass dudes. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, and my son actually just started driving. You know, I, I just got a driver's license too. We don't keep it on him. But go ahead. I got you. <laughs> about a about a week ago, he got his license, you know, and I gave him a, a vehicle. And uh so now he's on the road, you know, as a black man, you know. And me and his mother have spoke to him about that. That's, a, that's you know? ooh, and, that and, conversation, bro. And we, you know, wanted him to understand like a procedure. Like when you when you get pulled over, you know, and I think this is very important to young men, you know, and you know, uh, so speaking to, you know, a police officer, this is- this ran is, traffic. This is great. Yeah. You know, this is great. And yeah, this is nine like, years, bro. So, you know, when 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 uh, he gets pulled over, you know, we told him to, you know, make sure he has his stuff in the right place so he doesn't have to reach for anything. But if, if he does, you know, you communicate wait. that. Hey, wait. You communicate that. But also, like, you know, roll all the windows down. Mm -hmm. You know, have your hands on the wheels, when, when on the wheel. When the police officer comes up, be be polite. You know, don't argue. Don't be confrontational. You know, if he asks you to get out of the car, you get out of the car. If he asks you to, you know, you, you follow the you follow the, the you know you follow what the the Commands. police officer asks you to do. Commands. Okay. And then if 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 he does something inappropriate, you know, then we will handle that in court. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how that's how we that's how we teach my son. How you prove you know, that though? That's a I, good. How do you prove that? All right. What he's saying is. It's it's on the right track. What you want to tell a young driver, yeah, you know, like you want you want him to or any anybody. It's the beginning. Actually. It's the beginning stages of. Uh, well, and a lot of people they you know. I always tell my boys, my family, my people. You need to live. You need to be alive to be able to tell your story. Your side of the story. You know what I'm saying? I tell don't 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 do nothing that's going to get you in a situation where you won't be able to have the chance to tell your story you know so i just encourage because i used to have a camera in my car since your kid is you go on amazon yeah buy him a small camera that I runs spoke about it yeah it runs every time you when you drive and, and it start up boom and it's not you know it's it's kind of like people think it's it's not for you it's not you know you gotta you gonna have to have a conversation like i'm not trying to control you or see what you're doing you know but you never know when you get pulled over, all that stuff is recorded. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's, that's a great tip right there. That's one thing you uh, could do, like just put you know, you know and, put a camera in your kids. And car. as a you know, and I will be transparent here as a white male. Yeah. You know, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Right. So my my son's mother, she's a black female, yeah. and she says, you know, we're gonna put a camera in his car. I'm like, why? Real you talk. Know? First question, you know, right? Yeah. But then it makes sense, you know, and uh, like you know, and when she explained it to me, I'm like, all right, that makes sense. You and know? you know what? That's gonna make when that cop see that camera yeah. it makes him because now they got cameras too Absolutely. but now you have your own instead of somebody being on the passenger side putting their life in danger yeah. putting it all in the cop face yeah. and all you know just making making a, the situation worse than what it is just let that camera talk let it let it speak for itself you know um and, and you know another thing is too is like you know i know sometimes you could be doing something illegal you could have some weed in your car you could you know just follow the rules, man. Like, even if, you know, cause I've been there, I've had weed in my car, you know, I've got pulled over, you know, and um, I just do what they tell me to do, you know? And actually, you know, the crazy thing is I've been let go. Yeah. Because I've just was cooperative, man. I've done that. I cooperative. You over weed polite. in the car? I've done that a bunch of times. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah, a bunch of times. Oh yeah, man. You know, but you know, I'm just- I mean, ain't no kilos. This guy yeah, yeah, smoking yeah. a joint. Yeah, like a little, yeah. like a little, hey, your car smell like yeah, weed, nothing, I find a brooch in your car. Yeah, yeah, yeah ain't. Nothing crazy. Yeah. Like, you know, you could tell it's personal use or yeah. whatnot, you know? You got, yeah. But it's um, weed is a whole different we're monster. We're in a different some time. People like some people like you know pan it's panic. Though. You know what I'm saying? Like like oh man, you know th th this is gonna be the end right here. You know like yeah. and it's like yo, even if you get locked up for that or whatever, you know like th th you know there's ways to handle that the, yep. the right way. Yeah. You know and uh, you know don't panic. You know just do what they tell you. 
you know that that's what i say man you know and i you know, like you said, live to live to see yeah, the day, live, live to tell your story. Tell yeah, yeah, you, that's that's the most thing. You know what I'm saying? Because, um, my kid, I tell him all the time, like he got a mouth. He always, always talk. That's what get him in trouble now. I'm like, bro, just and he told me weeks later that he got a ticket, right? He's sitting outside of the the thing, and he told me the whole story, and I listened to him, and I heard the things that he said, and I'm I'm like, that could have been my son' life. You know, not thinking of, yeah. he just talked too much. I'm like, shut up, bro. Like, just just listen. Like, it's an adult. First of all, you're talking to an adult. So if that person is telling you something, then you need to listen. Yeah. And then second, it's a person of authority. You know, I was a cop. Your dad was a police. Your dad did this every day yeah. for nine years. Just pull people over and write them tickets. That was my main. When I came to work, I clock. I used to write tickets from my house on my way to work and then i get to work and we do the roll call and i go back out and write more tickets and then we got to come back to the police precinct and i'm writing more tickets like some days you just some days you be in a flow and that happens but um is, is there is there a, is there a like a class or you know like, like when you said educate you know is there a way to educate like the you know uh, you know the public you know like the, do, 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 does does the police station make a like video videos to say hey this is what you do when you get pulled over like, I, why, why I, don't, why i've don't, never I, to be honest with you not? i've never seen one but i think there are written rules that's all i'm gonna say like there are rules that are but wouldn't that be a great idea like for the police station that would be that would be, this that is, would be this dope is how it should be you know that would like, be dope you get pulled over and if you follow this way you know then you're following you know that would asking. be dope but you know one thing i would say is that if they do that, that do put them in a certain part of a liability because not every police department, not every police officer is the same and not every situation is the same. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. The only duty you have is if you see blue and right, blue and red lights, you just pull over to the right in a safe manner. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. Everything else is what somebody taught you or what you heard or what you, you know, you need to have a driver's license. You need to have a proof of insurance. Not everything outside of putting your hands on a car or turning on the dome light, raising the windows down and all that kind of stuff. There's no written, there's no written rule for that. Mm. Mm. I think that, I think that's a good point as well is like, you know, training your kids to have that driver's license, license available, like right there. Yep. And then having that uh, proof, yep. proof of insurance, of, of insurance yep. you know, like, you know, we need to teach our kids that yeah. so that, you know, like, yo, even if you go out there and you physically walk them through it, Let's, let's walk through let's this. Let's walk through this. Yeah, let me pull you practice. over. Let me let's pull you over. Practice, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, want, I want to see how you would respond. That's a good idea. If I pulled you over. Let me <laughs> we need, see, we show need me to, how you would be. We need to do a class, bro. We should, bro. We do it, for real. That's what I'm talking about. And we need like, to do a, put a class together and yo, put together some teenagers. Yo, we could make a video, bro. Yeah. We could do a video together. We could actually, we could use our children. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a dope idea. For real. That's a great idea. Yo, I think we should really do that, bro. With two black Absolutely. kids in a car, two black, white, and Puerto Rican kids. Yeah. It don't kids who they are. Just no, I'm saying, that was my yeah. kid. Yeah. Was I'm saying, because, <laughs> because you know, everybody mixed these days. Bro. I'm sorry, I'm yelling. And that's what I, but that's what I love, bro. Everybody mixed. I love that we're all mixed, yeah. because I feel like yeah. that's how racism is going to go by. Yeah, by. it's going to go away. Because, yo, you're going to look around and be like, yo, yo. everybody look the same. I'm, I'm, I'm having an aggressive cop. Everybody look the same. Have an aggressive cop run up on them. And see how they handle the situation. Yeah. But if they're in the class, they know. I still got my uniform too. Uh, eh. Yeah, it's not gonna feel natural. Yeah, it's not gonna be I natural. I got something to say scared. to that. I'm scared. I got something to say to that. I'm gonna I'm I'm look at the other end of that. So <laughs> the issue that I see, and I'm going for my experience, right? And I, I, I would say for me personally, I wasn't a bad kid, and you know, you can't always control your environment. But I would say that. I've had some bad experiences with people in authority. And it was just unnecessary. And, and the, you know what the issue is that I, I've, from my experience, there's, there's, the accountability is not there for officers. So, like, you can train your kids. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with training them, showing them how to act with the cops and what to do. But they, they're going to keep doing it. Those that, they're, those are going to keep abusing that authority because there's no accountability. Which, and it's not overall, I'm not saying United States. I'm just saying, from my experience, and then just even talking to other people, there's got to be greater accountability. So the answer is not to defund the cops, because that was a debate, remember? They were said, defund the police. But you got to think the long term. Is that smart to defund the police? Because we still need them when stuff goes bad. Who's going to, so, yeah. You're not going to call yeah. a firefighter. <laughs> well, he says, he says, live to tell your story. But uh, 
who do you tell your story? Like, I got punched and beat up by a cop in Atlanta. You know, I was running from him. But when he caught me, <laughs> hey, he put hands on me. Right. Listen, listen, like, listen. Is, Which is, I mean, whatever. You're going to be in the video for what not to do. If you make me run. Exactly. Yeah, I get it. You're going to be in the video for what not to do. All right? I mean, I get it. You need him in the video. I get it. He's going to be in your video. But That's what we're doing. Yeah, but who... I didn't put my hands on him. I mean, but anyway, so okay. Uh, of course, that's not. Precision. You know, there are people that investigate the police, right? Yeah. The uh, I, oh, what's it called again? I right, internal internal affairs. affairs. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I'm a. I was a kid. I was twenty. It's not a kid, kid, bro. It's not a kid. Twenty six. I don't know nothing about who. Your, your, your cerebral cortex and already formed at twenty five. You're good, yeah, bro. Yeah. I would say you a kid. Even to this day, I wouldn't not know how to get into kids are twelve and thirteen, bro. When you sixteen, you knew you knew better. And what? So you go you're to still, I. But you're still not a man. When the first time? No. What, how old you was when the first time you had sex? Uh, fifteen. Don't ask me that. You grown ass man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You you already. Well, now now I'm curious. So how so how you get in touch with I? You just. Google him and say, hey, this yeah. cop did such and such. You me. can stop another cop and ask him. Really? I mean, I, if you're scared, then I don't want you to stop. I'm terrified, him. Yeah. man. I don't want to know. But there's I, a way. If you, if, you pull up, if you pull up on your phone, mm -hmm. which, which is, you know, the internet is not in the palm of your hand, smartest thing yeah. outside of yeah, yeah, today. person brain. Yeah. If you pull it up and you say you type in Atlanta Police Internal Affairs, it's going to come up. I've never to you this try day. Now? Never heard anybody talk about how to get in touch with eternal fear. It's usually like if you have a complaint, go down to the police station, you file a complaint. But it, I've never heard like you can actually get into somebody that will investigate your situation. Why not? I've just never heard that. That's something that's never I mean, how effective been is talked that? about to me. How effective is what? The internal affairs? Yeah. Oh, it's that's effective. That's a good question. I done been, I done been I, down I've there. I've never heard that either. A lot of times. I done been down there and I got some days in the street. You got some what? Days, what? Well, you know, like... They take you and send you home for a couple of days. Really? Yeah. What'd you do for that? That's between me and the Atlanta and police. I, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I wasn't nothing crazy, man. I just, um, <clears throat> what happened the first time I went down there? God damn. <laughs> More than once you to Because people complain. You got you to understand, like, people... People I complain. never thought that went anywhere. Yeah. I, I thought that was bullshit. The whole go it was a, one to, And I'll tell you the, the most craziest thing I had, bro. I locked this guy up and I he had a cigarette lighter, right? Mm -hmm. He had a cigarette lighter. He was going to jail. You can't take the cigarette lighter to jail, right? Mm -hmm. I threw the lighter away. Mm -hmm. He went down and turned affairs and said, the cop threw my, my cigarette lighter away. I was like, well, I, I, I was young. I was fresh on. Mm -hmm. I was like, to me, it was just, it was a cigarette lighter, but it was his property. Wow. And they take that in consideration, bro. Like you, you get that stayed in my file. Yeah. Like that's that was in my file for the whole time I was a police officer. I did not think sustained that. Went. I'm blown away right now. It's a, it's a sustained complaint because I threw a homeless guy's that a homeless guy that I was locking up, I threw his cigarette lighter away. That was his property. And what came of it? Not not just get you know you, you get a, get him another lighter. Yeah, <laughs> that, they, there there are there are people that aren't police officers. Um, I can't think of what they call them, but when things happen, they could complain to them and. They'll either cut you a check for how much a cigarette lighter costs. Really? Like, yes, bro. Yeah. You Chris, know how many people don't know this? Let, yeah, dog, right? this is, yeah. I'm blown this away is right now. How many complaints here? would Chris have filed if he knew this, this information? Yeah. Yeah. He's about to, yeah, how far back can they go? I mean, right? What's yeah, the statute of limitations the statute. on yeah, that one? We're starting start making some calls right now. Yeah, bro. Yeah, he's got a list. <laughs> yeah. I have a friend that lost 300 X pills. He ended up going to jail. <laughs> for like driving no license, got his car out of the impound. His X pills were gone. He never got charged with them. In 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 uh you, Sandy Springs, there are people, there are drug dealers that call the internal affairs and say, "Yo, this cop took my drugs, bro." For real. Did he get reimbursed? He, for that? No, I don't know. <laughs> he needs I don't know if he got. Right now. I'm not gonna I say. Know the outcome. I'm not gonna say they got reimbursed, but I've known, like, bro, you are you are a known drug dealer. You you yeah. like people in the neighborhood know you're a drug dealer. And you call an internal affair saying, yes, the cop locked me up and then took my drugs. Hey, if he's a known drug dealer, might as well. Hey, I want my dope back. You know what I'm doing out here. 
the fuck? Hey, yeah. he's being yeah. transparent. Yeah, I'm being transparent. Genuine. You know yeah. what I do. It happens. So, you know, I want there's something else I want to mention. This goes to what Dave was mentioning as well. Like, as far as training, right? Yep. That's all part of, I'm going to go back to my word education. Yeah, I know. I know. Right? I, got you. I know your word, bro. I know you need I'm to be a teacher. Back. I'm going to bring it back. You should have been a teacher. You should have called him. This is love language. <laughs> educate people. my love language. Right, you're supposed to be educating people out here in these streets. <laughs> well, no. So, the thing is, is like, you mentioned something about the community, right? So, sometimes, you know, like, you know, the community don't show out. It's not a big deal, right? Maybe if they have an event that's from the police. Well, the way I look at it is a case-by-case -case basis, right, is the best way to do it. So, if you're not reaching the masses, think about the people you help. You can't help a whole community by no, yourself, right? You do my part. You do. Your, that's my point. So, doing your part who cares about the numbers right i, I mean i do you know i mean in a small sense but think about it though but if you did like so that's why some of these things never happen or or or, or if they try to get something going oh we're not getting enough support people don't care well there are those out there that still care man yeah even you know if, I mean? if if, if it's people out there that care and that should be a driving force regardless of the numbers because you never know that one person you help like i'm about to tell you if it's one or 100 showing up i did something you did something thank you and that's how you can start making a difference in the community right so i was reading an article about how you can literally change your your genetic makeup by changing the way you live and think and it's not right away yeah but it's someone in the family has to stop yep. a process of someone say it's a curse or our family's this yeah. way Nah, man, you you can. That's a toxin. You can you can eliminate that toxin from your family tree, but it's gonna take work, so that down the road you don't look back and be like, yeah, that's that's my family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It could be from the diet to where you think to where you live. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you can help one person, you don't know what that that help can do to the entire family. You know? Oh, no, you're right. You're right. How's your brother doing now? <clears throat> oh, he's good. He don't smoke no more. He drink. He matured out of that. He 47 though. That uh yeah. mindset of yeah. like fuck it, I'm gonna do it all. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah but then when too. you but uh, another thing about growing up in the hood is once you start seeing your friends die off mm -hmm. and go to jail, you know, you then you start thinking like, I'm next. Yeah. You know, like that's come on man, growing up, I mean you close to my age, twenty one mm -hmm. was like a blessing, twenty five was a, a, a anomaly. Growing up in the hood, like when, if you made twenty five in the hood, mm -hmm. like you did it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that was it. And so for for me to leave high school and go to college, because I played baseball and because I was in a band, and you know I went to HBCU and I was able to have that kind of stuff, you know, at my at my fingertips because of my band directors and stuff like that, and because I watched Different World and the Cosby Show and stuff like we don't have those kind of stuff that's coming on TV. That's trying to educate black kids on how to become men and how to, to want to go to college. I went, I pledged fraternity. Mm -hmm. I watched Different World, bro. I remember Ron and you know Dwayne, you know being a Kappa and you know I, I yeah that was unreal to me too yeah. when I saw that you know yeah because you didn't see it happen to you didn't because we didn't think life. it was obtainable exactly yeah yeah uh, yeah it was, absolutely we didn't think it was obtainable growing up in the hood and if you if it was seven of us in a two bedroom apartment mm -hmm. yeah. seven of us in a two bedroom project house. Yeah. So you we didn't you don't you don't think those kind of ways, but you don't even try. And that's why I say it. some people don't try, bro. Some of my some of my boys they grew up slinging and banging and dead in jail, but some of them also got out. You know, so yeah. You don't you don't you, you don't know until you know. Yeah. yeah. That's the worst thing about it. Yeah. Like you, until you see it and until you know and learn it, then you don't know. I was I was kind of blessed to have a stepdad that was in the military and he used to bring home these trinkets and all this kind of stuff and different different um wording and writing because he would go to all these countries that's what i was gonna ask you, you from other saying? countries he would go to all these countries and he would bring it back and i was intrigued by it you know what i'm saying so i knew that there was more than just what i was growing up in but when i was growing up that's all i knew like that's we couldn't walk on the next block because they would call the cops and they would get y'all little project asses back in the project. You know, that's 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 just the way it was because a block from where I grew up at, it was a white neighborhood. Yeah. And back then in in, in the eighties, white people and black people didn't really yeah. it wasn't meshed like that. So when I saw all that stuff and it just opened my eyes. Yeah. 
know exactly what you're talking about. Let me ask you, um, um, you know, switching subject is uh, again. Uh, he's switching that boy. Uh, switch, switch it up, boy. Switch, switch it up. Perspective. Shoot, shoot, boom, boom. Shoot, all over the place. Shoot. Let's go. So, uh, you know, you spoke earlier about you know your mother, and you spoke about you know your love for her and you you you, your father you know what was your relationship with your father i used to run from him okay yeah my dad grew up in my all my family grew up in the same projects right my dad used to live on one side we lived on this side my grandmother and then another thing was my grandfather my grandmother didn't want my dad to even come around her house where we lived at it was with me my grandmother and my two aunts my brother and my cousin and there were seven of us so my dad used to always come around starting crap, so my grandmother got to a point where, I don't want to see you around here. Don't even come around my house. You know, growing up, my dad respect olders. Like, I, you know, you, you get that. So he respect my grandmother. So when my dad used to come down the street, everybody was like, no, do it, don't your dad come in. So we used to run, and the safe haven was my grandmother's house. Once you get in the grandma's house, you're good. Uh, why were you running from your father? Was he just, uh, like, was it was he trying to pun like you know punish you or... What was what was as a as a kid when your dad is not around and you and you like I mean well as a kid growing up in my neighborhood your dad was always the one that you know told you not to do that he always trying to chastise you and you know your dad was always looked at as an enemy and that's why like till this day when my kid's mom called me and she'd be like Gavin did this I'm like all right well let me talk to him because I don't want to be the bad guy and then she would punish him and send him to my house right and she would let me know what his punishments is but i'm like i'm not gonna punch not, my time with him is my time when he yeah. gets back home his punishment can continue because i'm not going to hold him against the things that i want to do with my kid because i grew up like that so not you know? coming to your house is punishment <laughs> no yeah not, that's how he's gonna look at that's how he's gonna look at to him yeah, yeah so that's that 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 mentality was created growing up as a child that your dad was the bad guy so when my dad came around, we ran because I saw my grandmother mistreat my dad. So I was like, "It's well, I'm gonna mistreat him too because that's what that's what that's how you're supposed to treat this guy." Here we go. This is the guy. This is this is the guy that you're supposed to treat like now, this. But but your grandmother, she probably felt some t type of way about your father because of things he had done, other stuff that I didn't even know about. Exactly. But but so, it, it 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 trickled on me. It's like the the fairy dust. Yeah. So me and my brother, when we saw my dad, we ran because. We knew that he was the bad guy because my grandmother was like, don't come back around here. But was he a bad guy? No, he wasn't. I talked to my dad all the time, bro. Right like on. we actually, me and my dad actually, my dad is, me and my dad in the same fraternity. So, so, <laughs> so why, were they, why were they, why were they painting, why was she painting him to be a bad guy? What was the issue? When you become a father, you are one. Oh yeah. You understand. And I, I had that conversation when I, when I got, when, when my dad, when my kid's mom and me and her went through all the stuff that we went through, I picked up the phone I called my dad. I said, man, I'm sorry. I apologize now i know what you went through you know because he went through similar things not being a part of family now, i don't know what he did to my mom for them two not to be married again but i felt that he had i had to give some kind of reprieve because of you know like now i'm a man with a child he always said that when you become a man and you get your own kids just like your mama said when you become a, when you become a man you get your own house you can do whatever you want to do now you're in your house walking around with your drawers on you doing whatever you want to do same thing with your dad bro like growing at least the same thing with me and my dad so once i got my child and i dealt with my kid's mom in a way that i felt like it was like deja vu and i remember the same stuff from my dad and my mom and the stuff they was going through with child support and my son couldn't live here and i couldn't live there you know i had to i had to humble myself mm -hmm. i called my dad and i told him i'm sorry me and him talk all the time bro like he called he ain't called me in 24 hours like oh my bad you know because i'd be getting busy and then i call him we we just have we have a totally different relationship now we're not we're not father and son but we do have a grown-up relationship as a dad you know because we did i didn't grow up in the same house with my dad so i don't know how that feel you think you were used as a tool by your mom as a kid probably yeah i don't know a that lot for of women, sure a lot of women do that i don't know kids. that for sure though yeah i'm yeah. not gonna put that on my mom either though no it's, it's crazy to think how many kids are going through that yeah. Right? because their parents separated and then one parent's using yeah you know that yeah. that negativity and introducing that to their kids i've that, never that, that affects their relationship that happened to me you know yeah. my, me and my dad we're not that close and that's probably because of my mom's view of my dad at that time when they separated and me being so young how that influenced me yeah of course you're closer to your mom so yeah. 
If she hates him, then I must. I need to hate him too. Exactly. So grandma hated him, so everybody else had to hate yeah. him. You know? it, it sounds like to me, from you know, I don't know, Mike. I don't know your situation. What, what was your situation with your father? Uh, so my dad and I, we didn't. We he was really not much. He wasn't in the picture at all. I didn't even call him dad. I called him Mike. It's the same name. He wasn't a father to me, but my mom never badmouthed the guy. Mm-hmm. She taught me. My mom's old school. She taught me to respect anyone older than you. Respect them. Right, even though my dad was in the picture, they got divorced. I, I respected him. Right, she didn't give me a reason to hate him, but I found a reason to hate him. But then, <laughs> because he put his hands on my mother. Mm-hmm. You I saw that, or you yeah, heard that. that? I saw okay. that as mm. I, that, that that affected me. I, could imagine. I was like, this dude was gonna put his hands on the one person that's taking care of me, you know, the picture. And I was young enough to understand this ain't right. I, I'm weak, small kid. What am I gonna do? This yeah. this this man, right? So, um, I got to a point when I got older where. I had, I thought, do I forgive my dad and accept him? Because they're two different things. You can forgive somebody, but then there's acceptance is there too. How old are you now? I'm, I'm 43. Okay. So forgiveness and acceptance are not the same thing, right? Right. So you can forgive somebody, but you know you're not coming to my house for dinner. We ain't having a drink. We ain't yeah. having a cigar. We ain't doing none of that shit. But with my father, I got to a point where I said, Yo, he's gonna have to live with the things he did. Why am I holding that? Because it made me an angry person growing up. I didn't know where the anger came from until I got older. I was like, oh. But after a while, I'm like, I can't blame this on him. Mm-hmm. Right? I I can't even blame my mom because I was mad at my mother for being weak. I said, how are you going to be weak enough and, and, and let this man do that to you and then affect us? Are your family from the islands? No. Okay. No. no. Did your mom get past that or was she, she still did. holding on to it? Okay. She did. She got past it. You know what I'm saying? But um, it's funny just to what you were saying. Your, your environment molds you, man. So I, I kind of sometimes I wish my mother just molded me to be like less accepted of my father because she she taught me to just be respectful man it was just the way it was back then you you don't look people in the eye you don't you don't look adults in the eye until they or talk with them until they they say speak and I did the same with my father but I was like this guy don't deserve it yeah I said you gonna treat a woman like that yeah you don't deserve nah so so I was conflicted right I was conflicted as a man but. One thing I realized as I got older, I was like, you know what? I have to be able to get to a point where if I'm going to say I'm forgive this man, then I need to accept him. With you, it's different. There's nothing to forgive your dad for, it seems like. Oh, if I'm wrong, right? So it's... you. Just uh, I got... To, no. So it's, it's a matter of then what? Accepting him in yeah. your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Without interference. He didn't do me anything mom, wrong. right? Because yeah. like you said it, right? Sometimes the other parents will play on that. Mm-hmm. And I have friends that say, yeah, man, my mom held my dad back for me and I blame him that he want to be around, but the woman's telling the man not to come around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the kid don't find out until they're, they're older. <laughs> and the dad's like, I always loved you. That can mess you up. Now you're in therapy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you should be. Say, your relationship yeah. with your dad, Chris? Have I tried to? Well, oh, I, I, haven't, really, well, I, said, Did I you? haven't really had the opportunity. We've yeah. been apart. I mean, he lives in New York. Mm-hmm. And I haven't lived in New York in, in like 20 years. So you haven't talked to him on the excuse. phone or anything? No. I, that's a good point. It isn't an excuse. Because if I really wanted to, you know, and if he really wanted to as well, we probably would. But no, we, we talk every week. Uh, okay. We make a point there you go. to communicate every Friday. Oh, okay. Right? You know, what's up? say what's going on. You know, have a good weekend. Like, you know, give me an update on your son. That, that sort of thing. Uh, it's disappointing that my dad and my son are never, they may never really have a, a relationship. It's the only grandchild he has? Um, no, my sister has two kids. Okay. What yes. if you had him down here and had a conversation with him, man? That'd I would love for him to come down to visit. Cool. And, you know, I would love it. So um, you ain't got all these daddy issues putting it on me when, mom, man, we get out of <laughs> when we're by ourselves going to the club and shit. This guy. <laughs> Listen to this guy. This guy's I'm airing out dirty laundry. Obviously the father figure between the two all of right, us, okay? Right, 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 you're sitting I'm in sorry, my house right I'm now. sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Don't forget right, that. Go ahead. <laughs> but no, no. I, you know, I, I, I do think about it. And the older I get and the older he gets, you know, I know he's he's in the later part of his life, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm in the later half of my life, right? I'm 41 now, um, so time's running out. If we're ever going to reconcile, it's it's got to be soon, you know. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, like I said, I've been thinking about it, and I, I definitely would like to. And I, I use the fact that we're so far apart as an excuse, uh, but you know, I, I really would love to. So you said your dad is in. New he's, York. In, he's in Brooklyn. So I, f- I met my dad when I was nine. Uh, didn't see him from the time I was 11. At 37, I flew to Dominican Republic to. I remember that. I remember a conversation you. Conversation yeah. with him. Yeah. 
That's that's way farther than yeah, shut, shut New up. York. All right, all right. But I gave him a DNA I, test. I got your point. <laughs> First, I gave him a DNA test. So it ended up being I, your dad? Huh? That ended up being your dad? Yeah, well, I wasn't I wasn't sure. I felt like we didn't look alike. He wasn't around. So I was like, man, I'm going to go swab this guy's mouth. <laughs> so um, when I got there and we took a picture together, then I saw the kind of lookalike. Okay. But yeah, he ended up <laughs> being my dad. But um, I had a brief conversation, you know, the why you weren't, you know, blah, blah, blah. And what I, the conclusion I came to in the end, it wasn't um, anything between him and my mom or anything. I, he was just not a, a good guy. <laughs> mm. he, he just wasn't a, a good dad or, you know, he was, a, he was a player and he was dating different women. And he ne- was never married to my mom. He just had a date with her and got lucky. And yeah, here I am. So, um, but, but throughout my whole life, through my... Through my single digit years between the ages of you know one and nine i'm thinking oh man this guy this guy doesn't love me or what's the deal blah 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 and then in my teens i was kind of still feeling that way but kind of you know i was making friends and in the streets all the time so i wasn't really even thinking about it going to jail and stuff going to jail and stuff <laughs> and then in my 20s um you know, the older I got, the more I, it didn't bother me anymore. But I wanted to have that closure, and luckily I did because when I met, when I met up with him in Dominican Republic, I only spent three hours with him. Got my closure, got my DNA test, okay, mm. came to the conclusion. Two years later, fucking uh, had internal bleeding, ended up dying. Oh shit! And that was it. Oh, yeah. So uh, when I was 39, he croaked, and I didn't feel shit to this day. I don't feel anything because I didn't know him well you know enough him, yeah. too. Right. But I'm glad I wasn't sitting there like wondering, wondering like shit. I wonder, yeah. was this guy really my dad? You know what I mean? Right. Did he, why didn't he come around? Blah, blah, because all I was getting was my mother's side of the story. Mm-hmm. So that's usually how I go. So if you can, if you can. Well, it's a, it's a little different situation for me because my my parents were married. Yeah. Um, so they got married pretty young. I think my mom was 21. Um, and uh, yeah, he was 23, mm-hmm. I think so. They were married. They were together for, I don't know, the first seven years of my life. Then they separated. I got divorced. Um, and so it was it was kind of rough between them during that time. It wasn't an amicable divorce at all. It was like, you know, my mom took us and, and we, you know, we moved. And uh, we didn't see our dad after that. It was me and my sister. And uh, we didn't see our dad too often after that. You know, my mom moved on. She had another guy pretty shortly after that my stepdad and uh so that changed the whole sort of relationship between me my sister and my dad he was raised by your stepdad yeah i was raised by my stepdad i was too um so it's a little different because i knew you know i, I lived with my dad for the first seven years of my life i knew him my parents were married uh, i wasn't ever wondering you know where he was and, and why he wasn't around i knew exactly what had happened um, and then it just kind of, after everything went down, I didn't, ha- I ceased to have a relationship with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, that sucks. Yeah, it does. So. And short, shortly, cause I know you want to say something. When I had that conversation with my dad, I can't remember me, my dad, my mom, and my brother ever being in the same house. I never seen a picture. I never remember throwing a ball with my dad. I never, I don't remember. I don't have any memories with my dad as a kid. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So when my son was born, I made it my duty yes. to throw a ball at him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right this so, throw it at him. I'm like, you gonna remember me. <laughs> <laughs> He's, Daddy, I don't want it. No, you gonna be, you, you gonna want it. it. Yeah. <laughs> For real, bro. So I don't I don't care what it what, whatever it takes, bro. Just have make sure that because like again, I'm I'm 45, I'll be 46. So back then cameras, phones and all that stuff wasn't really around, so there's no memories. Right. Right. Except the ones that somebody have that they hoard, but he can't. My dad can't give me the memories that he have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and That's I have it. none. Yeah, and to share your successes and your experience with him, I wish I could have uh, got to know him and shared some of the things that I, or even got some advice from him. Yeah, <laughs> when yeah. I was doing that, it kept me it's out something. of trouble. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what's awesome? Um, so my sister sent my dad or our dad. Uh, the first episode of this podcast, Word. he watched it and then he hit me up and he was like, man, I'm so proud of you. You know, we, we need to, you know, get in touch so I can talk about, you know, what you're doing. And 
and whatnot. So uh, this, what I'm doing here, this podcast is kind of like an outlet, you know, for, for me to keep, for me to present myself to those who I, I've lost touch with, like my dad, right? He can see what I'm up to. He can, yeah. he can hear, you know, my ideas, my thoughts. Your voice. Yeah, my voice. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of grateful for that. I'm glad you guys are here and, and being a sure. part of that too, man. You know? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Okay. So one of the things I take from this, and I'm, I'm grateful to be here. Thanks for inviting me, Dave, and nice meeting you all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's nice to hear everyone's experiences. And, and you know, and now we're all men in this room, right? Yeah. And Men raising men. Yeah. And, you know, it feels good. I, when I look and at my women. experience now, and I'm hearing you, you all talk about your experiences, we wouldn't be who we are if we didn't have those experiences. Absolutely. So I actually thank my father. Since we're talking about fathers, yeah. I thank him for being a good, bad example in my life because without him being that way... Say it, bro. Because I learned... So you can learn to be right. learn to be a good man and father by having a good father, but you can also learn from a bad example. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah. that's what I had. And now I was in a position... In, um, a couple of years ago, my dad was sick and we're not close. And I called him up. He wasn't he wasn't ready for that conversation. Yeah. Cause he didn't expect me to do that for him. So it gave me closure. I made my peace. I forgave and accepted him. And I said, it's up to you at this point. Mm -hmm. Right? So with you, you talk about your dad. Mm -hmm. It was an opportunity for you to get him down here and you I mean, guess what? It's up to him to reciprocate. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And uh my dad was like, Man, you're actually a better man. I said, No, I'm not. I'm imperfect just like you. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to learn from the past and, and be better. Yeah. I'm not a better man. I don't ever want anyone to think I'm looking down at them. Yep. Right? I, so we learn from each other. I just want to thank you guys because this, this yeah, is man. It's good, it's been a great experience, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Yeah. After this, you can go home and have a good cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's been some good education over there, here. What, what you just said made me think of a saying. They say smart people learn from their mistakes, but wise people learn from the mistakes of others. You know what I'm saying? So you're wise to be able to see the mistakes that your you know your dad made and, and learn from those and not repeat them because a lot of people aren't wise they'll do the exact same thing that you know hurt them in the past you know they'll do it to their kids yeah so my brother's doing that right now <laughs> to his kids so doing exactly what our dad did to us so this is the <laughs> whole reason chris why i wanted to do this podcast yes sir is because this is my mission you know this is my mission to help men wake up you know like we need to wake up man i mean it's it's a common den denominator in everyone's life is the father is not doing what he's supposed to do mm -hmm. the head of the household and then it's it, you know there's no guidance for the young man you know so then it's left to it's left on the teachers it's left on the police officers it's left on you know like you know the public to take care of your children you know and it's not a race thing it's in every it's in every race, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and, and it goes back to us. It goes back to our choices, you know? So, you know, when we talk about, we think that, you know, having lustful sex out there is not a problem. It is a problem. Because guess what? When you knock up that chick that you really don't like like that, mm -hmm. you don't really like her like that. But right. now, now you got a kid and now that kid's going to grow up broken right. because you don't really want to be a part of her life. You don't really love her. Right. You don't even love yourself. That's why you were having sex with her because you were... If you loved yourself, you'd value yourself. You wouldn't just yeah. you wouldn't just be giving out your stuff, man. And, and it and trust me, I, I, yo, I'm the I was the worst. <laughs> but it took me a long time to realize that, man. And now where I'm at, but that's why that's why I want to use this as a platform to get through to other men. I want to use this as a platform to get through to young children, you know, young men, mm -hmm. you know, because really, man, it, that's where it's at. That's how we're gonna make change. You know, we're gonna get like like you were saying, man. You know educate these uh, educate the young men that not all cops are bad you know what i'm saying that's how we make the changes you know we're old dogs you know you ain't, you're a lot of old dogs you ain't gonna get them to change right you know you might you might you might you might get lucky yeah, i can't teach an old dog new tricks right? exactly that's what, that's what they say that's what they say but uh you know so you know the the name of the podcast is better gents right yeah better gents podcast you know so so what we're trying to say is look, what we're all trying to gather here is how to do better as men. And, and, and what we're doing right now is we're, we're bringing transparency, you know, and a lot of men don't understand transparency. They, they, they keep it bottled up. And then and then they, they instead of, you know, getting counseling or talking to other men, you know, they they drink or they smoke or they plug into the wrong sources. And then we just keep getting the same problems over and over again. So, like, I truly believe that, you know, what we're doing 
is going to change the world, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, what we're going to, what we're going to teach is we're going to teach men how to value themselves. We're going to teach men how to truly love yourself, you know, because if you truly love yourself, then you can, then you can truly love that woman because most of the time we're in relationships and we don't even love ourselves. Mm. So how, how are we going to love her if I don't even know how to take care of myself? You know, I'm not, eat, I'm not eating right. I'm not sleeping right. I'm not getting the right rest. I'm not eating the right uh, foods. I'm not, you know, exercising. I'm not reading. I'm not writing. I'm not seeking peace. If I'm not doing all, you know, all those things, then I don't know, even know how to take care of myself. So then I can't take care of my woman. Then, then when I have a kid, I'm going to teach him nothing. I'm going to teach him the same thing. I, and then this is how we keep getting these problems over and over again. So, um, so, the, so what we got to do with this show, and this is, is, is we want growth, you know? So, so if we're going to grow, if, if, if we want to, produce growth to our listeners then we're gonna have to grow you know so you have to make a choice like if you're on this show you gotta say hey i want to be a better man you know and then we're gonna surround and then when you when you're on your off time and you're doing and you're plugging into making yourself a better person a better man then you can bring that back to the show when you come on here mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and that's how we're gonna move you know like that's how i feel and uh you know god you know god will take your mess man and he'll create a message so, you know, all this stuff is messy. And just like you were saying, like, yo, we got all this messy stuff going on. But, man, you know, you, you, you chose to, you know, not be like your father. You know, you chose not to be, you know, like, and, and that's what it takes, you know, like, uh, it's the tale of the two brothers, you know, I could either grow up and, and if my dad was alcoholic, I could, I could be just like him and be an alcoholic, or I could see him and I could want to do different, you know, because I like, I don't want to be like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so You're talking about Donald Trump and his brother, <laughs> that's what happened. Is that what happened? Yeah, know. yeah. His brother was an alcoholic, ended up drinking himself to death, it, and really? he went the other direction. He oh, ended wow. up like direction his dad. Yo, well, he awesome. ended up like that's his dad. Well, he ended that's up a, like his dad. A, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, nah, I've heard that. I'm not that guy. Chris is a fan of Donald Trump. Huh? I'm not a political.